Hi, welcome to this video in which I'll showcase the enhancements to .NET Assembly Calling introduced in Power Builder 2022. If you're not familiar with .NET Assembly integration in Power Builder, it was introduced in Power Builder 2019 R2 as a means to facilitate natively working with .NET assemblies from PowerScript without needing to write a COM wrapper. This version introduced two new Power Builder objects. .NET Assembly, which lets you load a .NET assembly into your program, and .NET Object, through which you can access a .NET object's methods, properties, and public fields. Also new in this version is the .NET DLL Importer tool, which saves the developer the hassle of having to configure the .NET assembly instances manually, while also having the option to wrap method calls in try-catch blocks to handle invocation errors. The 2022 release of Power Builder further enhances this feature by introducing characteristics that allow you to more easily integrate C# -sharp code with Power Builder, such as support for generics, delegates, interfaces, and abstract classes for both parameters and return types. With this, more C# -sharp data types can be automatically mapped to a PowerScript data type without writing any extra code, further reducing the line of code count when calling the .NET assemblies. Support for .NET 5 and 6 assemblies, as well as enabling the capability to call back Power Builder events from C# -sharp code, and thus enabling code bidirectionality between Power Builder and the C# -sharp. In order to make use of this feature, the developer has to use the register object function to associate a Power Builder object instance with a string handle. Then use this handle in C# -sharp to invoke an arbitrary event on the associated object by using the registered object .trigger event function. To use this function, you must add a reference to the appropriate pv.net invoker assembly in your project. Now then, let us take a look at these changes in practice. We'll begin by exploring the demo application we're building. It's an application that can send an email to a list of people after a set delay. We'll put both the timer and the email sending code on the C-sharp side. Here we add the list of people we want to send the emails to. Here we define the contents of the email. And down here we specify the delay in seconds. While I already have the UI in place and some UI and state management code, there's no .NET assembly management code in any of the objects. We'll be creating that as we go. I chose the familiar scenario of sending an email as an example to facilitate the understanding of using this new feature. Note that in addition to the existing email sending functionality in Power Builder, the upcoming Power Builder 2022 R2 will provide a new SMTP client feature. If you're interested, I suggest you look forward to Power Builder 2022 R2. Now let's create a C# -sharp project close to where we have our Power Builder project. It will be a .NET 6 class library project and we'll name it PB Callbacks Demo. Now let's add the pb.net invoker DLL as a reference to our project. We can find this library inside the Power Builder runtime directory. This assembly provides us with the functions required to invoke PB callbacks from C# -sharp. I'll rename the default C# -sharp file into timer.cs. In this class, I will implement a simple task-based timer function that receives on its parameters the time, as well as the callback object and the callback event names. Instead of hardcoding the name of the events in C# -sharp, we will pass them from Power Builder, providing us with a little bit more flexibility in case we need it. With this code, we will be invoking the tick callback every time a second passes and the end callback once the timer runs out. Let's create another class named Mailer. The Mailer object will help us send emails based on a list of recipients, a subject and a body and it will invoke the specified callback once the email is successfully sent. In order to send an email, we will need to have the credentials of an SMTP server, so we'll add them to the class as properties. The 
Then, I'll add the library we need to perform SMTP operations, MailKit. Create a method to build a generic list of recipients based on an array of email addresses. And then, I'll create a method to send an email to a list of recipients. We'll be taking the list generated from the previous method and passing it here. Same as before, I'll specify the callback object and events in the method itself. I'll have the code invoke a callback after the email is successfully sent, and another callback if an error occurs. Now create a class named stop, make it static, and make a static void method called main. I'll then change the project type to console application. This is to have the compiler put all the dependencies for our code in the same location. And with that, I will build the project, and then go to the output location. Copy all the files in the directory, minus the exe, and place them in the location of the Power Builder workspace. Also, take the DLLs required for .NET inter-execution from Power Builder's runtime directory. You can see the files required in the Power Builder documentation. Time to go back into Power Builder. Import the DLLs into the workspace by using the .NET DLL importer. Have the MVOs be instance variables and use the window lifecycle events to create and destroy them. I'll add the code for loading the assembly, registering the callbacks, and some basic error management logic in the load assembly buttons clicked event. I will also configure the SMTP server details in here. In the click event for the send button, I'll call the timer's runtimer method, passing the seconds value and the object and event names. The timer seek user event is already programmed to display the value it receives through the callback. And in the timer end user event, we'll send the email by calling the send email method, passing the required arguments and the callback names as well. The mail sent and mail send error user events are already defined, and they simply display an appropriate message box. Now with everything in place, let's run the application. I'll enter an email address, a subject line, and a body, and then click send. A countdown will begin ticking, and after the time elapses, an email will be sent. And that's it! We successfully integrated the .NET callback functionality into our Power Builder application. If you would like to know more about this technology, follow the link on the screen to download a trial version of the software or schedule a meeting with one of our teams.